So there will be another one, another definition. It looks a little bit complicated, but if you look closely, the first term here is temperature difference at the inlet. This one is temperature in the temperature difference at the outlet. Okay? These two are subtracted from each other. The denominator would be same thing except you put logarithm up front. Okay? This thing is called Logarithm, logarithmatic mean temperature difference. Sometimes, in short, people call it delta T log mean. If you're somehow curious how people come up with this kind of formula, it will be derived to you in unit operation three. Okay? But at this point, just trust me. Okay? So there will be some progression in terms of definition. The first one used inlet temperature difference only. The second one used both ends, but the term, the how to average them, they use simple ar arithmetic mean. The last one used a little bit more complicated way to take the average. Okay? And I'd like to emphasize here. It doesn't matter which one you use. The amount of heat calculated supposed to be equal. Okay? All these Q supposed to be the same number. So therefore, since A here are the same. So if you choose to use delta T1, you need to use H1. Okay? If you choose delta T log mean, this one's supposed to be H log mean. The formula for calculation of H1 and H log mean are different. Okay? So make sure that you use the formula or equation for calculation of uh, heat transfer coefficient according to the temperature difference that you use. But I can tell you that this one is the most popular. So normally, in the handout or in the textbook, heat transfer coefficient mostly would be represented in form of H log mean. <coughs> because people have found that according to experimental data, prediction using this log logarithmic means would be more accurate comparing to the experimental result. So people prefer log mean formula. But the most precise way to calculate heat transfer would still be the calculation of heat transfer individually at different position here. That means you need to find local heat transfer at different position. 
and then integrate it all over the place. That would give you the most accurate way, but it is the most difficult. Okay? If you calculate local heat transfer like this, you can set up equation for calculation. This equation means you take the whole length of the pipe divided to small pieces. Okay? Suppose this piece has the length delta z. And inside, if the length is small, if delta z is small, temperature here, the bulk temperature will be called Tb. The surface temperature is called T0. The difference between Tb and T0 induced heat transfer. That would be driving force for heat transfer within this wedge. Okay? And the amount of heat transfer within this wedge is small because we slice the whole system into small slices. So amount here would be represented by dq. That dq can still be calculated based on Newton's law of cooling. So dq would equal to heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the transfer area and multiplied by driving force. Transfer area here is pi d delta c because the width of the wedge here is only delta z. All right? Once you get dq and you want to calculate the overall heat transfer, you just integrate q here with respect to length z. You get the overall amount of energy transported. This is the most accurate way. All right? So, the driving force here will be found locally. So sometimes this one is called delta T local. Heat transfer coefficient will be local as well. Okay? So if you use this equation, it means that you recognize that heat transfer coefficient itself varies along the length of the pipe. So you think that you, you prepare yourself that edge here is still changed with respect to position. But if you use one of these three, you assume that heat transfer coefficient is constant along the length. Okay? Now, if you have a pipe and you have some heated source that heat the fluid in the pipe like this, okay? Suppose the length, the heated length is L. The diameter is D. If you take overall energy balance around the heated section, okay? Then you have input equal to output for energy balance macroscopically. 
there will be two inputs. First would be energy coming with the fluid. That amount of energy can be calculated by using um, enthalpy. Actually, that's supposed to be something like this. Or T reference, right? Enthalpy of the fluid coming into the system is basically mass flow rate multiplied by specific um, heat capacity and then delta T. But don't be confused. Delta T here is a change in temperature from reference point to the, temp to the actual temperature of the fluid. So if you assume that fluid here coming in at uniform temperature, that temperature is called TB1, okay? If you take the enthalpy at reference temperature to be zero, the enthalpy at your actual temperature would be this number, right? According to thermodynamics, okay? This amount would be amount of energy coming in together with the fluid. There will be another energy in that's heat transfer from outside into the system. That would be taken to be Q, I mean to be input as well. Output would be WCP TB2 minus T reference. According to thermodynamics, reference temperature can be any number that we choose. And normally we should choose it to be zero degree. Just so that we can drop this term out easily. You don't need to worry about temperature different. I mean temp reference temperature anymore. Okay? So if I move the CP delta T here together, you have WCP TB2 minus TB1 equal to Q. Of course, Q here now can be calculated using one of these models. If you use the arithmetic one, okay, then Q here will be HA pi DL delta TA. Okay? Or if you rearrange, you can get etched. 